This is RTV6 News at Noon, working for you. Good afternoon, I'm Meredith Barrick. The snow finally has left us for the most part, but it isn't going anywhere just yet as the cold is now settling in. Storm Team 6 meteorologist Todd Claussen is here. Todd, what can we expect for the rest of the day and the rest of the week? You know, lots of sunshine from this point forward throughout the remainder of the day and eventually a warming trend will head our way and that'll start to melt the snow that has fallen. Our two day snowfall total at the airport here in Indianapolis, 7.6. I know the total's a little lower in some northern locations, a little higher in some others, uh, but on average, this is what a lot of people saw, at least in and around the metro area, and here it is sitting inside the track at IMS, but look at the sunshine now, and the sunshine is already starting to help to melt things. You've been out and about, the pavement uh, is getting a little bit slushier, and we'll continue to see this snow melt while the sun is up. However, once the sun sets, look for some refreezing to happen. Temperatures are sitting right at freezing in Indy, 33 in Bloomington, 29 in Tim and these temperatures actually will start to drop off a little bit as we work our way throughout the remainder of the day. But all the precipitation is gone, not only for the day today, but really for the foreseeable future. It's a pretty dry stretch of weather. So we'll have to battle the temperatures today and tonight and into Thursday morning as they're below normal. Temperatures actually fall from this point forward throughout the remainder of the day back into the 20s. Tomorrow's the coldest day of the week. More on that and beyond coming up in just a few minutes. Todd, thank you. Crews from the Department of Public Works are still hard at work to get the snow and ice off the roads. Here was a live look at their Indy Snow Force viewer. This is where Metro crews are working to keep the roads clear. The streets that are in light blue are being plowed right now. Those in green have been plowed within the past two hours. And if your street is another color, it has been longer. But DPW does have one of its 80 trucks on the way. The department says all of its plows and salt trucks will continue working until 11 o'clock tonight. Then they will have a smaller crew working to keep the roads clear during the overnight hours and into Wednesday morning. As those plows work to clear the roads, we rode along with one driver to get a first-hand look at what you should and should not do when driving near a plow truck. This is something to keep in mind all winter. Drive along the parts of the road that are already clear. That's your best bet to avoid any issues. No matter what kind of rush you're in, do not try to pass a plow on the shoulder or a single lane road. State and Metro Police have worked more than 300 crashes in central Indiana since the snow began. And a hit and run on the interstate has now left a man in critical condition. It happened on the ramp from northbound I-65 to eastbound I-465 on the south side. The man was out of his car checking his tires when he was hit. State police are still looking for the car that hit him. This winter weather is tough on everyone, but especially for folks who are already having a hard time, like homeless youth. Courtney Modisette is the program director for Stopover Incorporated, a nonprofit dedicated to helping young people who are experiencing homelessness. She says when the weather looks like this, those young people go into survival mode and can sometimes put themselves in dangerous situations. Human trafficking is big. You have 10th Street right there. And 10th Street is full of drugs and crime. So we try to protect the kids as much as we can. Young people in need can get in contact with Stopover Incorporated in a few ways, including through Indigo. A person can go to any bus driver and tell them they need a safe place to stay, and program organizers will pick them up at the Transit Center. You can find out more about the program and how you can help in this story on the RTV6 app. Facebook found itself at odds with the widow of a Metro police officer involved in a police charity video deemed inappropriate. After RTV6 asked Facebook to review this situation, the company says it made an error. Jamie Bradway's husband, Rod, was killed in the line of duty in 2013 in Indianapolis. The group, known as COPS, or Concerns for Police Survivors, stands by her today just like they did at her husband's funeral. Bradway became upset when police denied a video the group planned to use on Giving Tuesday. The three minute plus video highlights the emotional tolls families experience after losing a member of law enforcement on the job. Facebook would not let cops post the video on Giving Tuesday to raise money because of the content. I thought this can't be, um, but it was heartbreaking. You know, I'm a survivor and it just felt like we were being um, attacked all over again that how can such an amazing organization be denied this opportunity 
In response, Facebook released this statement to RTV6. We rejected this ad in error. We apologize for this mistake, and we are working to approve it so it can run. The House is expected to vote on the articles of impeachment against President Trump as early as tomorrow. And as ABC's Inez de la Catera tells us, a new poll shows the country divided over how that vote should go. The House Rules Committee holding an unruly meeting. Debating what the rules should be for that final full House vote on impeachment. President Trump is being accused of obstructing Congress and abusing the power of his office for personal political gain. Overnight, the president's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani, admitting to the New York Times that former Ukraine ambassador Marie Ivanovich was forced out because, according to him, she was impeding investigations that could benefit Mr. Way. Trump. I forced her out because she's corrupt. But during the impeachment hearings, Ivanovich was repeatedly dis described as a corruption fighter. A new ABC News Washington Post poll out today shows the nation remains bitterly divided when it comes to impeachment. 49% saying Trump should be impeached and removed from office, while 46% say he should not be. But there is one point a majority of people agree on. 71% saying they think the president should allow his top aides to testify during an all but certain Senate trial. That includes 64% of Republicans. Impe Impeachment trials, like most trials, have witnesses. Senate Democrats have been doubling down on their demand to hear from four witnesses the White House had blocked from testifying, including acting chief of staff Mick Mulvaney and former National Security Advisor John Bolton. But the American people want the truth. And that's why we have asked for witnesses and documents. But Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is pushing back. It's not the Senate's job to leap into the breach and search desperately for ways to get the guilty. Schumer and McConnell will sit down together sometime soon to figure out the terms of that impending Senate trial. Senators will then get to vote on the rules of that trial and whether to allow any witnesses to testify. Inez de Quatera, ABC News on Capitol Hill. Back here at home, a coffee shop is again opening its doors on Christmas Day to welcome anyone who doesn't want to be alone. Needhammer Coffee Company is at East Washington Street and North Hamilton Avenue. Last year, they opened on Christmas Day after they were inspired by a sign they saw from another shop. The coffee shop says they welcomed more than 150 people from college students to seniors so that none of them would have to be alone on Christmas Day. Needhammer will be open this coming Christmas from noon until 3 p.m. They say they will have free donuts, hot coffee, and love from our volunteers to everyone who shows up. So you got an email or a Facebook message saying you are a big winner, but in reality, you probably aren't. Next, how clicking on that suspicious email link could cause you a lot of problems. And they had the day off from school anyway, so some high school teammates got together and decided to be good neighbors. It's a good deed that did not go unnoticed. We'll tell you more about that coming up. Todd. And Meredith, the snow has finally come to an end here across central Indiana. While we're getting rid of the snow, the cold is getting ready to settle in for a brief little stint here in central Indiana. We'll talk about that and also when the big warm-up heads our way coming up when the news at noon continues right here on RTV6. Live in front of a studio audience, ABC Tomorrow. Time now for an RTV6 Consumer Alert. Joining me in studio today is Tim Menescala with the Better Business Bureau. Tim, today we have a warning about a scam targeting businesses for these awards that aren't really awards. What is this all about? Yeah, uh, we call these vanity awards. And mm -hmm. basically what it is, is a company is going to get contacted, usually by email, and they're going to say, hey, you've been selected as the best whatever employer in the city or yeah. whatever it might be some uh great sort of award uh and they say hey you're going to get a plaque here uh but you've got to pay oh 100 200 300 dollars for this plaque we say wow I, I didn't even know i was nominated for this i didn't even know that this award existed well really there is no yeah. real award there is no real nomination process they're just trying to uh go to your ego and say you know gee wouldn't it be nice to have a plaque that says I'm the best whatever. Mm -hmm. So uh, really these uh, awards and things like that, a lot of them are just meaningless. They really uh, aren't an award for anything. So if you do get contacted by some of these, number one, you really want to research what is this award? You know, is this legitimate? Mm -hmm. Is there really something behind this? Uh, you want to ask some very, very specific questions. You know, just understand about the nominating process. How, how did I even get nominated for this award? You know, yeah. if I just came out of the blue, what? how did that all that happen? And then here's the big one. If you're going to get a real award, 
typically you aren't going to have to pay for the plaque. You know, if you're going to win something, they're going to recognize you and give you the plaque. So if they ask you to pay for it, uh, that's usually a tip off that it's really not a meaningful sort of award. It's just kind of an ego sort of thing. All right, Tim, thank you so much. This has been an RTV6 Consumer Alert. Lauren, thanks. Tonight is the night. Bankers Life Fieldhouse will be on fire all because of a visit Pacers fans have been looking forward to for quite a long time. But first, we are taking a live look here in Bloomington at the IU campus. Things awfully quiet there. Maybe that means all the students there are studying for their finals. We'll have more of your Storm Team 6 forecast coming up. You're watching the news at noon on RTV6. Keller. Keller and Keller. This is RTV6 News at Noon, working for you. I'm Ted Rollins. Today on Court TV, we are expecting a possible verdict in a murder case involving students at Michigan State University. 22-year-old Isai Baronis, a college senior, was shot and killed while trying to break up a fight between four women in October of last year. The defendant... 30-year-old Stephen Washington is facing second-degree murder charges. Washington claims he didn't shoot Baronis. During closing arguments, the lead prosecutor told jurors there is more than enough evidence for a conviction. We are going to ask you to hold this defendant accountable. Accountable for the senseless, tragic, ridiculous, and violent death of Isai Baronis on the night of October 12th, 2018. And we are asking you to hold this defendant accountable by a verdict of guilty of second-degree murder, guilty of carrying a concealed weapon, and guilty of felony firearm. Thank you. Jurors are expected to begin deliberating this afternoon. We will have continuing coverage of this trial and much more throughout the day on CORE TV. Now back to you. You can learn about other cases right now at CourtTV.com. Hiring Hoosiers is an RTV6 initiative to connect you to job opportunities and the training needed to get those jobs. This week, more help for the hundreds of Hoosiers impacted by Celadon's shutdown. The Indiana Department of Workforce Development and Employee Indy will hold a virtual job fair for former Celadon workers on Thursday morning. The online webinar will begin at 10.30 a.m. and will allow several companies to explain their hiring opportunities. To register for the virtual job fair, you can go to the IndyChannel.com or click on the RTV6 app and check out this link in those stories. Who will be cashing in tonight? LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and the LA Lakers coming to Bankers Life Fieldhouse tonight. The Lakers have the best record in the NBA right now. The Pacers are hot, too. They've won 11 of their last 14. Tip-off is at 7 o'clock tonight. Well, Todd, I think it might be safe to say Banker's Life will be one of the hottest places uh, yeah. to be later today. Sure, that's a hot ticket. Pacers old coach coming back into town with the Lakers as well and Frank Gogol. But look at that, Meredith. We haven't seen that in a little while. The sunshine. I We've know. been talking about snow here for the past 48 hours. And between the two storms, it added up to 7.6 inches officially at the airport in Indianapolis. And this is the most snow we've had on the ground this early in the year in quite some time across Indianapolis. So unfortunately, it's not going to stick around for Christmas. If you've been hoping for a white Christmas, I unfortunately have bad news for you. So enjoy it while it lasts here. As you look from IMS back towards downtown, we've gotten rid of uh, the clouds as well and we're enjoying the sunshine and a temperature that sits at 32 degrees right now. The winds are out of the northwest at 10 miles per hour. The winds aren't super strong, but that northwesterly wind direction is a chilly wind direction, and that's making it feel a little bit cooler out there. And these temperatures will actually start to fall off a little bit as the afternoon progresses. So right now is about as warm as it's going to be for the remainder of the day. 33 right now in Martinsville and Bloomington, 29 in Tipton and Greenfield. 27 is the current temperature in Richmond. We'll see these temperatures drop down into the 20s here by 2 and 4 o'clock with plenty of sunshine though that is the good news just be really careful if you're out or later tonight because the sun is actually starting to melt some of the snow out there and then soon as the sun sets we'll watch for some refreezing to take place and that could lead to some slick spots tonight and also come tomorrow morning for your commute but the radar is finally nice and quiet the clouds just lingering a little bit here in the Richmond and Greensburg area but as we expand out we have nothing back off to our west 
northwest and we're about to enter a pretty quiet weather pattern. So we're getting rid of a lot of the precipitation, but we're going to bring in some very cold temperatures. So if you are heading to Bankers Life Fieldhouse this evening, temperatures will be in the 20s as that game starts and also progresses across the area. So you'll definitely need to have the heavier jacket. And then for the day tomorrow, it's the coldest day that we have this entire week as highs will only get up to right around 25 degrees for your afternoon high. So it's a chilly but bright Wednesday. Thursday mornings, the coldest the temperatures will be for the foreseeable future. And that's because we are going to get down into the single digits in many locations, a little warmer down to the south. But as we look ahead, the warming trend is going to start on Thursday afternoon. We'll get up to 33 degrees by Friday. We're pushing 37 with quiet conditions. And by Saturday, with a high of 39 and mostly sunny skies, most of the snow will probably be out of here. And then we're going to continue to see our temperatures warm even a little bit more as we head into next week. By Sunday and Monday, we're talking about high temperatures that will be in the 40s. I wouldn't be shocked maybe Monday if we could get a 50-degree temperature across parts of central Indiana. And then obviously Christmas is the middle of next week. And temperatures look like they are going to be in the mid 40s and maybe we're hit around 50 degrees with no storms in sight. So uh, the snow, it's around right now. It'll be gone by the weekend. and It's not coming back for Christmas. Uh, I know people want a white Christmas, Todd, but after these past <laughs> two days, Christmas came around. Hopefully everyone will be OK with right. sunshine and dryness. All right. Well, here's a good story from uh, the snowfall. Some high school students in Trafalgar used their snow day yesterday to help others. The Indian Creek wrestling team didn't have practice because of the snow so instead they went around the spring lake estates neighborhood and shoveled every driveway probably just as good of a workout a clinton county family is getting national recognition for their christmas lights the cottrells from rossville are featured on today's season finale of the great christmas light fight right here on rtv6 we have a preview of their amazing light display families come from all over to drive through the lights you can see if they win the great christmas light fight this afternoon from three to five right here on RTV6. When we come back, it is time for our pet of the week. This is Doug and what a good boy he is. So well behaved. We'll introduce you to this handsome fella coming up after the break. Serious. Get Stewart. Get started. All right, Colleen from Indie Humane is here <laughs> with our pet of the week and today we have a very fun loving active dog who likes to play with balls, toys, and loves his treats. So tell us all about <laughs> Doug here, Colleen. Um, Doug is, he's three years old. He's really funny. He's not wanting to be up here right now, but um, he is a great dog who, like you said, loves to play with tennis balls. He loves to play um, with pretty much anything. He loves to hang out on the couch. He's a big old baby. So he's a big cuddler. Yes. And when he's not cuddling, he likes to be active. So yes. he needs to go to a home where he can probably be the center of attention. And yep. that means he's going to get one, lots of love from his new owners, but two, no other pets in the home. He's got to be a single pet. Yep. He wants all, all the attention. All your attention. All the attention. And the best news about Doug is he is free to be adopted. Yes, he does not have an adoption fee. All right. So Doug... You're not very active. You just like that ball sitting there. I was right going to say, he's had uh, a really no, exciting day. Now it's all day. about the treats. So uh, <laughs> he is been here in the studio for about 10 minutes, and he is definitely a ball of fun. <laughs> and he likes his tennis balls. All right, let's take a look at your seven-day planning forecast. And, of course, Doug will be available uh, by 1 o'clock when Colleen gets back to the Humane Society. As we go throughout the course of the next couple days, it's chilly tomorrow, and it's cold Thursday morning as temperatures get down into the single digits. But once we get past Thursday morning, temperatures will start to moderate 33 degrees by the time we get to Thursday afternoon, then closer to 40 on Friday. Friday, which puts us back to seasonable levels and then starting on Saturday we go above normal with lots of sunshine and much of next week is well above normal with highs maybe as warm as 50 degrees. Mm, perfect weather next week to take Doug on a nice right. long walk. I like that. All right thanks for joining us we hope to see you back here at five in the meantime have a great afternoon and still be careful out